Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome to a video that literally everyone and their mother has done on YouTube and I am just here to continue the trend and that is a physical TBR video slash bookshelf tour because I have two bookshelves. One of them I'm not going to be showing in today's video because it's literally all of the books that I've already read and it's just basically how I continue to keep a bit of separation so I know what I haven't read and what I already have. And it just helps my brain a little bit more. So today we're going to be focusing on this bookshelf. I'm going to be going through all of the books that I have in here and sharing with you guys either why I haven't read them, when I plan to read them, etc. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and start with like a quick overview of my bookshelf. So this is everything, like I said, that I have not read yet. And I got the bookshelf from Walmart. You can definitely tell that it's from Walmart. The quality is not ideal. It's quite wobbly. I obviously don't have the backing on it either just because I feel like it's very flimsy and it just doesn't hold up very well. Not like this is gonna hold up forever either, but whatever, it, it's working fine for right now. I would love a taller one so that I can obviously fit more books, but also stylize the bookshelves a little bit more, kind of have some more decor pieces and things like that. But for now, this is what I have. And up on the top shelf, I have my current physical TBR. So like all the books that I want to read in October, I've also got my little pumpkin here that has a bunch of bookmarks, my little lamp, and then this spider was attached to the Halloween card that my dad got Brian and I for Halloween this year. He sends us a Halloween card every year, so there's that. Then we move down to this first shelf, and this is basically my series shelf, so any series or duologies or whatever are all going to be on here for the most part, unless I can't fit them, which I do have a couple of series books slash duology books that I can't fit on here. but. I have this organized by author. It's alphabetized by author. So starting with A, I have Victoria Avard. She's the author of the Red Queen series. I read Red Queen, but I need to reread it because I feel like I missed a lot. But I do have the novella that goes in between book one and book two. Book two is Glass Sword. Then I have Lee Bardugo's duology, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. And then I have Holly Black's trilogy. I have already read The Cruel Prince, but I have the other two, so The Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing. Then I have A Study in Charlotte. This is the only one in the series that I have. Unfortunately, I cannot find the second one. Like literally anywhere, I can't find it. So she's just chilling there. That's by Brittany Cavallaro. I also have the first three of six books in the School for Good and Evil series. Um, I have the first one in my physical TBR for this month, but I have the second one and the third one. And then I have the next two books that are available to me in uh, paperback from the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. So I've got Hand on the Wall and The Box in the Woods. I've already read Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stair. So those are the last two before Nine Liars, which hasn't come out in paperback yet, which is why I don't have it. Then I have the last three in the Akatar series because I've already read Akatar. I have A Court of Mist and Fury on my TBR for this month. And then I have these three left and I just love the look of them. I think the covers are so pretty. They just pop really nicely. Then I have the rest of the Shatter Me series. So Restore Me, the little novella duo that kind of goes in here somewhere. Uh, Defy Me, Imagine Me, and then the last like epilogue novella which is Believe Me. And then I have the Love and trilogy by Jenna Evans Welch. I have every intention of reading this one in February, this one in March because it's Love and Luck and St. Patrick's Day, and then this one in April. That's kind of where I'm going to go with that. Um, as far as the rest of these go, I'm basically just waiting to finish the ones that are on my current TBR. That's basically why I haven't read any of these ones yet. I haven't even started the Six of Crows duology, but I have a feeling I'm gonna wait until I'm done with at least some of these series 
that I'm in because I feel like I'm reading like 12 series right now so I want to wait on those but everything else I plan to read ASAP I just have other books that I have to read first then we move down to this shelf which is all of my standalones basically so I have these ones organized by title in alphabetical order. So I have All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This one I haven't read just because it is part of like a series kind of and I haven't read the other ones so I kind of have to wait on that one. Then I have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This one I haven't read just because I just got it from Walmart and I kind of feel like it's going to be like a spring or summer type of read for me so I might wait on that one. I have A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This one I have an idea for a video that I really want to do, um, but I really, really want to read this one. It's like a Hades and Persephone, I think, um, retelling. So it's like a Greek retelling. Then I have Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I'm not even going to lie. I'm a little nervous to read that one just because I've heard good things, but I've also heard bad things. And... I don't know. I feel like Beach Read was good. I did like People We Meet on Vacation, but I'm not like an absolute stan of her stuff. So I don't know. That's a me problem. Then I also have Bunny by Mona Awad. I am terrified of this book because so many people are like, what? It, it like literally makes no sense to some people. So I'm terrified of that one. I might try to get the audiobook of it to kind of help me through it but I'm not entirely sure. But I do really want to read it because apparently it's like a psychological thriller. So that might be really fun. Then I have The Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. This one is the second book in the Daughter of the Pirate King duology. I've already read Daughter of the Pirate King. That one I read in July, I think. So I do really want to read this one. But I'm also kind of waiting on the audiobook because I do... I kind of want to read it with the audiobook. I think it might be really good with it. And I'm waiting on it from my library. I'm on the wait list for it. So I'm kind of waiting on that one. Lotus, I really want to read this one in July because it takes place around like 4th of July. So I'm kind of holding off on this one, but I am really excited about it. It's like a second chance romance type of thing, I think. Malibu Rising, I tried to start this one. I just wasn't into it and maybe I just need to give it a little bit more time but I also don't want to be disappointed because I do love TJR like I love her stuff um but I'm I don't know why I'm like scared of this one I don't know I also need to get Carrie Soto is back but I haven't gotten that one because we only have it in hardback in the states right now and I do not want the hardback I want the paperback so that's another reason. November 9th by Colleen Hoover. I'm actually going to try to read this one in November this year because it's November 9th and I think I want to do a reading vlog for that one because I don't know I'm very interested in this one because it seems like a weird concept of only meeting up once a year on a specific day. I don't know. Tia Williams seven days in june i do want to read this one in june i know i don't have to but i kind of just love having like books that feel like that time of the year and i feel like this is going to be one of them it's about a couple of authors that have kind of been writing to each other in their work that were in love many years ago broken up since etc seems like it's going to be a really nice romance I have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I've heard good things and bad things about this one and I'm nervous, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm very, very nervous. So we'll see when I get to this one. The Hate You Give, I really wanna read this for Black History Month because I want to, I did that for um, Hispanic Heritage Month with Mexican Gothic and I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter and You Had Me at Ola and I really wanna do that again for uh, Black History Month, so I want to read this then. Riley Sager's The House Across the Lake. I am really excited to read this one. I just haven't prioritized it, to be honest, because I've been wanting to read other things, which I know sounds awful, but it's just the truth. <laughs> so there's that. I have The House, House in the Cerulean Sea, I Can Never Say This, by TJ Klune. This one I think I want to read next month. It is kind of, 
I don't know. I, I Maybe I'll do like a reading vlog on that one instead of November 9th. I'm not entirely sure. But this one is a very interesting concept. It also has a bit of controversy around it. But I'm really interested in reading this one. And I have the audiobook through Audible. So I want to get that one read. I have The Maidens by Alex Michelides. This one is his second novel. And I've heard really, really good things. And I really want to read that one as well. But again, I have a video idea for this one that also goes with A Touch of Darkness and the next one, which is The Song of Achilles. It's all very like Greek, you know? So <laughs> I have an idea, I have an idea, but I'm probably gonna have to execute that next year, if I'm being honest, because the rest of this year, November and December, is just gonna be insane. So anyways, do you wanna read both of these? Just give me some time. The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. I have heard good things and bad things, but also that book is insanely long. I think it's like 500 pages or something, and it doesn't even look like it's gonna be that long of a book, but the pages in here is like Bible paper. <laughs> it's insane. So, again, I need to read this. I want to read it. I'm excited to read it. I have the audiobook on Audible to help me out a little bit, but I'm terrified of the length. I'm just gonna be honest about it. Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Just haven't picked it up. I don't know, really know why. I honestly just kind of randomly picked it up from Walmart one day and it's been sitting on the shelf ever since. And then I have The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. I just got this one from Barnes & Noble, but I do really wanna read that. And actually, I have the audiobook through my library right now, so I might be reading that pretty soon. I just picked up this one, The Witch Haven, um, from Walmart. Have no idea what it's about, <laughs> but there she be. Um, and then I also have this one by Jessica Goodman, They'll Never Catch Us. This one is kind of like a high school murder mystery type of thing. So I don't know. I haven't heard many people talking about this at all, actually. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm getting myself into with this one but it's basically been sitting here on the shelf ever since because of that. I also have Today, Tonight, Tomorrow. This one was super hyped up by Larry Reeds here on YouTube. She absolutely loved this book and I really wanna read it. It just kind of is giving me summer vibes because it's happening like within a 24 hour time frame at the end of a school year. And I feel like that would be really cool to read in like May or something. I know, again, it sounds weird, but I think that might be when I read that one. Then I have Verity by Colleen Hoover. Um, I don't know why I haven't read this one yet. I need to. I just haven't gotten around to it because I've been prioritizing other things. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Um, this one I'm terrified to read because I've tried to read like the first chapter and I didn't enjoy it. And I've heard that a lot of people struggle with this one. And I've also heard that a lot of people love this one. So it's just a polarizing kind of book. But yeah, I don't know. I have, like, I don't have any, like, time frame of when I want to read that one. It's just kind of sitting here. All right, next we go down to this bottom shelf. These are all books that I'm going to be reading in 2023 for a specific thing, so don't mind those. All right, so first up I've got Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I did not realize that Hook, Line, and Sinker and It Happened One Summer was like a duology by her. Had no idea. Don't have It Happened One Summer, so I need to get that. Um, and also it's a very, very summer vibe, so I'm not gonna be reading it anytime soon. Um, but I have the second one in the duology. I also have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. This one was actually recommended to me by the Barnes & Noble employee that was checking me out. I talked about that in my Barnes & Noble haul that I did. I'm very excited to read that one. I think it's part of a series if I'm not wrong, just because of the one that's on the front, <laughs> on the top of the spine. Um, so I don't really know if I wanna get into another series right now because I'm reading like 12 series, like I said. So that one might wait a little bit until like next year. And then I have these two books, both by Karen and McManus, One of Us is Lying and You'll Be the Death of Me. And if I'm being honest, I don't really know if I'm going to read them anytime soon because I read Two Can Keep a Secret by her and I did not enjoy it. I thought it was 
honestly like a waste of my time <laughs> so now I'm terrified to read these because I just I've heard so many good things especially about one of us is lying but I'm just like not excited about them <laughs> at all so I don't know I have all these other books to read though so there we go <laughs> Alrighty guys, so that is it for my little bookshelf tour slash physical TBR video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below. Ring the little bell icon if you want to be notified every single time I post a new video. And sorry for my dog snores in the background of this video. But he's, this is my life. And you guys are part of my life. So you guys have to suffer through it too. But anyways, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!